I am here tonight to honor my former high school English teacher, colleague, and friend, Mr. Gary Childs the second. <laughs> so to tell you about the impact that Mr. Childs had on me is an incredible task to accomplish in three to five minutes. Um, but to start, I need, I need to take you back through my educational journey. So my first actual memory of somebody reading to me was in kindergarten. And I know what a lot of you may be thinking, who remembers anything before that anyways? But I do. And, um, and while I still have trouble, Gary can attest to this, remembering a conversation I had last week, I have really vivid memories of my childhood. I can remember the smell and the feel of carpet that my family slept on as we traveled from my mother's friends and relatives' houses because we didn't have our own home. I remember the different bath towels my mom would hand me to use as blankets because we didn't have any. I can still draw the actual layout of the apartment that we lived in in Alabama when I was only two years old. However, I have no memory of anybody reading to me. School opened my eyes. I never knew that other kids lived lives that did not look like mine. I didn't know what other stories existed. And while I loved school, I struggled immensely. I had nobody at home to teach or reinforce anything. I would walk home after getting off the bus um, to find my stepdad passed out. And my brother and I had to make sure that we were quiet. We opened the door. We had to be as if we didn't, as if we didn't exist. We had to act like we didn't live there. Um, because if he woke up, he would immediately become violent. Many nights we went without dinner, yet somehow we managed to wake up and get back to school the next day. I finally learned to read, as Don said, in the third grade. Most teachers just passed me along and didn't take the time to get to know me. And I felt that my label was stupid or dumb. I didn't know that I was anything more. I felt like I didn't matter, and no matter how hard I tried, I thought perhaps I was born this way. At night, I would actually pray to do better in school. I wouldn't pray to live in a mansion, to have a better car, or that my family would have more money. I prayed to do better in school. I felt like, at the end of the day, when I would wake up and restart my prayer, that perhaps God had forgotten about me. And I can remember, at the age of five, having a conversation with my brother, who was four, that perhaps he didn't exist, because why would he put us in this situation? So I went through the rest of my education angry. I had some attitude. And while I was able to read after third grade, it still felt like I was light years behind other students. At home, at about 10 years old, a lot had changed. Um, my mom left my stepdad, and we lived with her. She worked a lot in order to provide for us. We finally had our own apartment, and it was nice not to have our stepdad around. But I still had no support in school. By the middle of eighth grade, I realized I did not want to live the life that I had grown up in. And if I, have it, if I ever had a family, which I do, they're here now. <laughs> I knew that I could never give them this situation. So the only option I had was to do well in school. So I went into high school. And I went into high school knowing I had to try. I just never felt like I was allowed to. And I, was never, I never felt like I was allowed to do well in school, as I felt like it was reserved for a special group of people, and I wasn't a part of it. So enter my high school English class. Immediately, the feeling in Mr. Child's room was different. It was different than any other class I had ever had. And Mr. Child smiled. He wanted to be there. And he wanted us, he wanted me to be there. Freshman year was an incredible adjustment, but having Mr. Child as a teacher was life-changing. So putting this into words is incredibly difficult. But Mr. Childs welcomes every student into every single conversation. Your thoughts, ideas, and opinions were not only received, but were valued. 
no matter how terrible mine may have been, he still acted as if they were phenomenal. <laughs> he listened. He really listened. He legitimately listened. And I can't stress this enough, because before that, I don't know that an adult ever had. Mr. Child invited us into academic discussion. He allowed the content to be part of our life content. Suddenly, I went from being an outsider in an education to being an insider. He introduced us to the classics, and he said, this is your odyssey. This is your journey. I finally understood what it was like to comprehend something that I felt like was outside my realm. I was allowed a voice and a seat at a table I never knew was reserved for me. He asked me to be creative, to share, and to take risks in my work. I never felt like it was okay to talk or write about my, my experiences because they were so scary. But the, the more I wrote and the more I read, the more I found that these stories were my actual stories. I remember there would be days at lunch, I would just walk into his room. It didn't matter what he was doing, he would stop and talk to me. He was always there for me and all of his students. My experiences mattered. To him and my future mattered to him. When 12th grade came around, I begged my counselor to put me back into his class. And while it wasn't the class assigned for me, I begged and pleaded until she did. And to finish my high school year with him mattered so much more than he'll ever know. That year was an incredibly difficult year. My mom foreclosed in our house, my brother had gotten into a lot of trouble. And she received a notice that year that she was maybe going to be laid off, which eventually she was. So college, it was on me. I had to pay for it. My mom said, you have my blessing, but there's nothing I can do for you. So at that point, I had experienced coming from nothing in my early childhood to, feel, to the feeling as though we had finally made it. My mom had finally bought her house. She had done well in her job. She had remarried. It felt like we were OK. But the notices came. It was during the foreclosures that happened during 2007, 2008. And we were on that list. She also lost her job after 17 years at the same place. So I thought to myself, what would happen if everything was taken out from under me? What career would I want? What would I want to pursue? How would I be fulfilled? in my life if I was told that everything that you had accomplished was going to be taken away from you. And the images that continually flash back are me sitting in Mr. Taub's class with a book. It's that feeling of being welcomed no matter what, accepted no matter my ability or my background, the feeling of being valued encouraged and told that you can do anything no matter what anybody has ever said. So I chose to teach high school English. <laughs> I made it pretty far. <laughs> I practiced this speech, and I was crying a lot more before, so this is better. <laughs> so I paid my own way through college, um, and I had to attend my local community college because it, it just wasn't an option for me to go away to college. Um, I also attended our local CSU, where I received my BA. And when it came time to student teach, there was no question. It had to be with Mr. Childs. So I student taught with Mr. Childs for a year and was lucky enough to be hired at Monterey High, my principal's here, <laughs> that year. Um, and when it came time for my classroom, I'm sorry, Ms. Parker, you're also here. <laughs> she was displaced. <laughs> I was given her room right next to Mr. Childs. So my forever teacher, the one that made me feel like I could, I am glad I can be here tonight 
to tell you and thank you for the work that comes for your heart. I mean, today and the, every, and, and the 28 years in the past, um, I am happy to be here and do the little and the Carlson Family Foundation for allowing me this platform that I never knew um, I could give back. And for the thousands of other voices who could not be here, thank you for everything. Thank you, Nikki. She, um, she duped me, by the way, because she was invited. I selected three of my favorite teachers to come. Nikki was clearly on that list, and she told me a while back that she wasn't going to be able to make it because <laughs> she had so many things going on, and I was receptive to that. I was disappointed. Um, needless to say, when I saw her tonight, I was pretty shocked. So this is... Um, <laughs> This is pretty incredible. Um, I just want to start by thanking the Carlson Family Foundation for hosting this wonderful event. I want to acknowledge Mr. Tim Allen for all of his hard work behind the scenes. I think we probably emailed like 2,000 times. <laughs> And Tim always readily got back to me in such a timely fashion. And, and I don't think at one point he was ever irritated with me. So I'm really happy for that. <laughs> I would also like to just share what an honor it is this evening to be with my fellow honorees. Today I got to spend some time in the symposium. And one thing's for certain, I'm in excellent company. So congratulations to all of you as well. I also want to offer a, a, a huge shout out to all of my people because they're here tonight. I have such a collection. I have my family is all here. My my wife and my children and my and my mom is here. Which is, I know that's really cool, right? <laughs> I also have uh, my dearest friends in the world are here as well. They're at another table, but thanks for coming. And, and, of course, my colleagues, um, they've been in my corner forever, and I wouldn't be up here without their support, um, Carrie, Ron, and, and Nikki. And I'm just going to make this proclamation right now. Nikki, you're going to have one of these, too. Yeah. So really quickly, I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about my dad. <laughs> When I was 10 years old, I had the opportunity to watch my dad teach. It was 1970, and he was teaching in the district that I currently teach in at MPUSD. He was teaching a sixth grade core class. And I got to spend some time with him. I wasn't in his class as, as his student. I was his son. And sitting at his desk, these are the things that I watched. Students were actively engaged. They often worked in groups before we ever called them collaborative. There was plenty of smiling and healthy laughter, and they were all willingly participating. And this wasn't an accident. Dad was careful to ensure that his classroom was a safe environment where students could, one, be themselves, secondly, feel comfortable, and third, always excel. So when I think of this award and what it means to me, I think of my dad's classroom. And I think and believe that at least on most days, I made it a priority to create a learning environment where students feel safe and can be successful. And this gives me the biggest reason to smile. So finally, I have to end with this. I have to acknowledge all of my students, every one of them, for this award, every last one of them. My former students, 
those students currently sitting in my classroom and, God willing, to all those students I hope to teach in the future. Thank you.